as we are ready for the tip of our Sonic blockbuster. Garrison Brooks, Andrew Playtech, Walker Miller, K.J. Smith, four seniors, along with a junior and Elite D. Black. Carolina won the first matchup in Durham, and they're underway here at the Dean Dome. The first possession belongs to the Blue Devils. Duke just one game over 500, 11 and 10 on the season, 9 and 8 in the ACC. And we've got an immediate offensive foul getting called on DJ Stewart. Walker Miller right in front of the charge circle. DJ Stewart on that little floater, instead of just stopping, let his momentum carry him in. And Miller just got his feet outside of that charge circle in order to draw it for the first play. So Miller again, a guy who plays sparingly, same with K.J. Smith, but they are seniors. Tradition is tradition. They are in the starting lineup, and Miller's already taken a charge. And there have been times where both of these guys have played. K.J. Smith actually started a few games last year for Carolina because of injuries. Yeah, when Cole Anthony was out, he actually started at Gonzaga and played a lot of minutes during that period. And there's the senior, Garrison Brooks, knocking down the shot. And is he hobbling a bit? It looks like he is, Jay. Looks like he came down on that left ankle. He stepped on Matthew Hurt's foot. Wendell Moore misses the three, and the rebound down for Miller. We'll keep an eye on Brooks, and now they will blow the whistle. And Roy Williams wants to know how Brooks is feeling. And oh man, oh man, on your senior night in a game of extreme importance, a guy who's been a great player here for four years has to leave. And hopefully he will be able to come back into the game. Well, especially the importance that he is to this team. And you can see hurt his foot, the left ankle of Garrison Brooks coming right down on the right foot of Matthew Hurt. And Roy Williams was asking why was that not a foul I mean he's an airborne shooter and an immediate turnover on the Tar Heels and again you just hate to see it hopefully Garrison Brooks can come back second team all conference a year ago and a guy that Roy Williams has just loved coaching for four years and that that shake of the head I don't think that was the turnover I think that was feeling badly for Garrison Brooks that he had to leave the game well especially given how important he is to this team in this game the ability to be able to step out and guard Matthew Hurt. Now all of a sudden you got to put a smaller guy, Leaky Black, on Hurt. And if you have to put Armando Baycott on him, it's a, a much more difficult matchup for North Carolina. Hurt, the leading scorer in the ACC at almost 19 a game. This is a 16-footer. And back come the heels. Carolina, 15 and 9 on the year, 9 and 6 in the league. And again, a 10 seed, according to Joe Lenardi. You would think a win here tonight would cement a bid, but lose this one, lose your first game in the ACC tournament. Of course, Jay, you don't want to leave anything to chance. No, it is so unusual for these two teams to be living the life that most teams live, and that is on or below the bubble. But North Carolina right now, I mean, you don't want to lose the rest of your games, but I think North Carolina is pretty firmly in the field. It's Duke that needs this win and a couple others so that they're not sweating on Selection Sunday. And we'll show you the ACC tournament seeding depending on who wins what a little bit later on. The seniors have come out of the game now for Carolina and the big freshman day around sharp into the game and immediately into the score sheet as well. Just a little screen for the screener, a diagonal up screen. And then a screen for the original screener, Dayron Sharp, just got really good possession to, uh, position down low. He is such a load down there and so powerful. And right now he's guarding Matthew Hurt at the other end of the court. Stewart walled up by Kerwin Walton, but the cutter is Jeremy Roach, who's got the easy lane. And Matthew Hurt drawing Dayron Sharp away from the basket. The lane was wide open because Armando Baycott had to be guarding the post, Mark Williams. Baycott goes right into the chest of Mark Williams and scores. Baycott has been so aggressive the last game, last couple of games. Aggressive there, but he had 18 points, 15 rebounds against Syracuse. Hurts three around and out. Rebound Walton, and the heels are pushing. Right into the post, Baycott, and he's called for a travel. Take a look at Dayron Sharp here. He winds up down low. That's him there. 
and gets really good position. And they're going right after Matthew Hurt. Get him down in the low post. I mean, that is a mismatch as far as size is concerned because Hurt does not have a lot of bulk to him. And you go after Hurt, try to pick up a foul on him early, and then keep making him guard in the post. The double there on Sharp. Aaron pass to Baycott. He has it blocked, gets it back, and finishes. And Matthew Hurt with the foul on a reach in. Now, Duke came with the double team. That is that is to protect Matthew Hurt so that he doesn't have to play one on one in the post and Baycott gets it the shot was blocked by Wendell Moore Jr. And then hurt he cannot reach in there. That is a cheap foul and it's it's too risky. It's just not worth the effort to reach in and all of a sudden you didn't even stop the, the play. You, know, you, you allowed the, the basket and you pick up a big foul. So barely three minutes into the game, Duke is already down seven. Mark Williams has a foul. Matthew Hurt has a foul. Kind of an ominous start for the Blue Devils here on the road. Yeah, and you have to expect that at some point in the game, Duke's going to have to play some zone because if there's not enough pressure put on the guards where they can see in, they're just going to get the ball inside all night long. It's closed out by Walton on Stewart, forces him into a tough shot, and the rebound down to the heels. Nice reach in, too, by Leaky Black. Without coming off his man, he's able to impact that play with a good reach. Big to big, over the top, sharp to Baycott. That's just too difficult to guard Baycott down low. You've got to have more pressure on the passer. Otherwise, it's like Tony Bennett said, it's a great phrase that he turned, saying, you've got to put pressure on the ball. We don't allow the, want to allow the passer to window shop. Williams has gone to the bench for Duke with the ball. His replacement, Patrick Tappé, the grad transfer from Columbia, who has the second field goal of the night for Duke. And now we're talking brackets. The ACC tournament will begin in Greensboro on Tuesday. If Duke wins tonight, they are the 9 seed. They would play Syracuse. North Carolina would be the 7. But if North Carolina wins this game Duke drops down to the 10 NC State becomes the nine and they would play Syracuse Carolina would move up to the six Virginia by virtue of its win today over Louisville and Florida State losing to Notre Dame congratulations to Tony Bennett and the Virginia Cavaliers they are the 2020 21 ACC regular season champions game on chart just with a big time block on Patrick Tappé and Sharp is so big and strong. He's got to be, if he's not the most powerful player in the league, I, I don't know who would be. 6'11", 265, very bright future. If you are just joining us, Carolina is without Garrison Brooks on senior night. He took and made a shot less than a minute into the game, but when he came back down to the court, landed on the foot of Matthew Hurt, rolled his left ankle, he has gone to the locker room and has not returned. That was a very smart play by Caleb Love to drive Matthew Hurt. Shot clock running down. Sharp gets a shot up out of bounds to Duke. One of the reasons, Dan, it's so important for North Carolina not to turn the ball over, not just that, you know, they can give Duke transition opportunities, but it, it, they offensive rebound so well that if they just get a shot, they've got a, a, a very good chance to get a second shot that's a, a more high percentage shot than their first one. I mean, you cannot offensive rebound a turnover. And you don't give yourself an opportunity to get fouled either. It's like the old Georgetown teams, right? Sometimes the best offense is just make sure you get a shot up and then go get it. Yes, especially for this team because North Carolina, frankly, is a poor shooting team, but they're a great offensive rebounding team. Wendell Moore Jr. off to Patrick Tappé. That'll be a shot clock violation on the Blue Devils. A little bit of an odd lineup for Duke right now. And that was an out-of-sync offensive possession. You give credit to North Carolina's defense. Tappé out. Mark Williams comes back in. Again, keep in mind, Williams and Hurt each have a foul and, and they're thin up front they need those two guys on the court as much as possible you know, North Carolina's offense is really what has let it down this year North Carolina's defense has been pretty good it's been top 25 in most of the metrics wide open Caleb Love who had 25 in the win in Durham a few weeks ago rattles home an early three he was four of five from three-point range in that game in Cameron Indoor Stadium since then he was three of 22 before he knocked down that one. He must see dark blue like a bull sees red. <laughs> Williams picks up his dribble, and now Duke just struggling to maintain possession with a shot clock under 10. 
Duke hasn't really penetrated beyond the top of the key in this possession. They're down to four seconds on the clock. Williams rolls, hangs too strong, gets it back. But the initial shot didn't hit the rim, and that's another shot clock violation. Another really good challenge by De'Ron Sharp. Well, Williams has a, a really good second jump. Long-armed and has played extraordinarily well over his last six games. Coming off an incredible performance, albeit in an overtime loss at Georgia Tech on Tuesday. But Williams went 9 for 9. 20 points, 7 rebounds, 3 blocks, and 3 steals for the freshman who, as Jay said, has been coming on like gangbusters the last few weeks. Back cut by Paul. Wow. And give the assist to Walker Kessler, who has just checked into the game. Another big guy, Walker Kessler, that is coming on big time. But that was a really good back cut by Walton because he was able to stop short and still make that short jumper. Again, they're playing without Brooks, and Baycott's on the bench. But they've still got Kessler and Sharp in there right now as Walton steps out of bounds. Now take a look at number 24 in white. Kerwin Walton. As the ball's being reversed, he just goes back door and stops short. As Wendell Moore was coming over, he could have taken it all the way and gotten into a charge, but he just took it right to the short corner. And that is not an easy shot to make. Really a good move and well executed. And right now, Matthew Hurt being guarded by Dameron Sharp out on the perimeter and has not been able to take advantage of it yet. And Jay, look who's back. Harrison Brooks is back out and immediately went to Roy Williams, said something to Coach Williams, and convinced him he's good to get back into the game. I don't think it took a lot of convincing. Do you think it was a long <laughs> argument? <laughs> For a proud four-year player, terrific senior, and good to see him getting a chance to get back in there on this kind of a day. A little bit ginger in his first movements on it, but not surprised he's fighting through it and knocks down a jumper. That didn't take long. And Carolina's out to a two-touchdown lead on Duke already. Well, Garrison Brooks averaged 22 points and nine rebounds against Duke last year. He's another guy that plays very well against Dark Blue. What a start for Carolina. And the senior Garrison Brooks back into the game, knocks down the jumper in the heels of 14. for number 18 Texas Tech and number three Baylor four o'clock Eastern time on ESPN and the app the Red Raiders are on a three game winning streak and of course Baylor's been trying to make up games right after the COVID pause so big time Sunday game heading into champ week the Baylor's four games in since their their long pause and the last two games they have looked like Baylor again their game against Oklahoma State played very well Williams is fouled on the dunk attempt. It might have just been a goaltend. Looked like it looks Walker like Kessler. It is a goaltend. Yeah, yeah. Walker right. Kessler yeah. reached up through the basket, which is not allowed. It's not allowed. It is the best way to block a shot, though. <laughs> <laughs> but it is frowned upon. Williams, the bucket. <laughs> he's going to make it anyway. Yeah. Right. <laughs> good opportunity to a good try. So if you count that as a dunk, which I imagine they do, now 24 of Williams' 50 field goals are dunks. But Caleb Love has knocked down his second three already. And Caleb Love has really struggled shooting the ball this year. He's a 23 percent three-point shooter. Can sing with every word. Jeezy seen it all. And you, do you say, do you do that before games? Before though? games, every time. All right, well, one teammate to be with you for the Hunger Games. All right. Had you played it because he a grimy dude. All right, last thing you binge watched, The Office. All right, well, who's your favorite character in The Office? Dwight Schrute. Name one thing that uh, Coach Williams says to you all the time when he gets on you. Casey! Come on, get to the board! <laughs> 94 feet. <laughs> The best, the best part is Andrew Playtech. He's a grimy, a grimy dude. dude yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he meant that in a positive way. Of course. Yeah. And there, and You're a grimy a, dude. Absolutely. But yeah. <laughs> nothing better than asking uh, a college basketball player to imitate his coach. <laughs> Garrison Brooks did a great job. But you know what? When you put up the kind of numbers that Garrison Brooks has put up over four years, and when you're the quality of person that Garrison Brooks is, and Roy Williams loves him, you can get away with uh, with doing coach imitations. Well, he's not just a respected teammate. 
He's a respected player throughout the league. Uh, anybody who's played against Garrison Brooks, you know, knows you're going to get a, the ultimate competitor. And you know, he's he's a quiet leader, but he's been so productive in his career and one of the best position defenders you're ever going to ever going to find. I mean, he he knows everybody's position out on the floor. What a start for Carolina. In spite of missing Brooks for a few minutes with an injury, they are up 21 to 6. They are 9 of 13 from the floor. Caleb Love's knocked down a couple of threes, and Duke can't get anything going to the offensive end. Carolina needs to look for Garrison Brooks. He's being guarded by Matthew Hurt. Let him touch the ball. Step back jumper, and he knocks it down with a shot clock running down. Not really what I was talking about, but it works. <laughs> I, thought, I thought more in the low post. Yeah. And Carolina extends the lead. And Carolina's pressure. Duke hasn't been able to get into any offense. I mean, it took them eight seconds just to get into something, and they've kept everything on one side of the floor thus far. The Blue Devils coming in off a couple of overtime losses against Louisville at Georgia Tech. Every loss they've had in conference play this year, and there have been eight of them, has been a close game. None of them has been by more than seven points. And again, the last two in overtime. But as Mike Krzyzewski uh, has said to a number of people, including us yesterday when we Zoomed with him, he said at some point you got to win those games. And uh, they are specializing in narrow defeats. But they got to win a couple games if they're going to have any chance of getting into the NCAA tournament. That's exactly right. And, and Duke continuing to double the low post and that was a wide open shot for Matthew Hurt not even close but there, he's not been able to establish any rhythm North Carolina has disrupted Duke's rhythm completely in this game they caught into the chest of Hurt too strong off the glass and then Williams just threw it right to Leaky Black and I think we have a shot clock issue but Leaky Black just kind of playing free safety jumped in there and stole that outlet pass I think they're talking about whether possession changed and whether or not the shot clock uh, should have been reset. And, and I think it did. I mean, Williams was down with the rebound and then threw it to Black. So, yeah. I mean, that was a steal, not a, not like that was a loose ball rebound. Yeah, this was a pass. Yeah, that that was definitely a change of possession. Yeah. So they leave the shot clock at 27 where it was and. Carolina inbound. RJ Davis, another member of the freshman class. These are two of the youngest teams in the country. Black with a cut and a feed, and Baker with a finish. Just a beautiful pass after that cut through the defense and found Baycott at the front of the rim. And Baycott put a little, little extra into that dunk. But just a beautiful play and beautifully executed by North Carolina. 26 to 6, almost 11 minutes in. Game of the breakfield into the game for the Blue Devils, and good defense there by Daron Sharp. Yeah, Daron Sharp has moved his feet very effectively. Switching on to a guard. Breakfield over Baycott. Breakfield is a, a scorer, but his last couple of games, just 2 of 10 from the field, 0 of 5 from 3. When you're getting a layup in a game like this, so calm him down a little bit, he'll be able to execute. And Garrison Brooks out of the game again, and now maybe testing out that ankle on the stationary body. And hopefully, again, can come back into the game. Ankles are funny, right? They could seize up on you and then feel better, but you never know right away just how serious it is. Got a foul on the floor going on Brickfield. Uh, watch this passing by North Carolina on that last possession. The backdoor cut drew the defense. Nobody helps. A little drop-off pass to Armando Baycott. Henry Coleman the has got to come over. And if DJ Stewart doesn't drop in there, and he's awfully small to have to do that, you know, you're going to give up that dunk. I've got a stat for you, Jake. Carolina's got nine assists on 11 field goals and eight different Tar Heels already have an assist in this. You know, let's talk about moving the ball and being unselfish. What a great shot by Stewart. He's got a chance for a four-point play. DJ Stewart also has struggled his last couple of games. He was 4 of 21 his last two, and R.J. Davis just got a little piece of him as an airborne shooter. 
caught his arm after the ball had been released. You just want to get, you just want to get pressure on the shot. Not, you're not going to block that. And a contender for ACC Rookie of the Year, the leading scorer among freshmen in the ACC. And look at the emotion on him trying to rally the troops. He played really well against Syracuse last Monday night. He had 21 points, seven assists against the against the Orange. Full court pressure, North Carolina beating it with relative ease. And they're going to a horn set. Don't run a ton of this. Sharp. Great field. Tries to step in and takes a charge, but gets called for the block. And it'll be sharp at the line with the Carolina up by 14. What a start for the Heels on their home court against their arch rivals. down by a significant margin early in this one. If they lose this game, Jay, they're 11 and 11, 9 and 9, and at that point, you gotta believe they probably have to win the ACC tournament in order to get into the NCAA tournament. Well, first, where did we find that yodeling music? That was outstanding. <laughs> have to go all the way to Switzerland to bring, bring back something that compelling. Well, as our producer, Jeff Dufine, tells me, he's a very busy man during the week. <laughs> 28-12, Carolina. Got a switch now. De'Ron Sharp has gone on Wendell Moore, but another turnover for Duke. That's got to be like seven turnovers. I believe it is precisely seven turnovers for the Blue Devils. Well, it's looking like a snowman there. It's got eight, but he's the number of turnovers. It's been remarkable. Now, now wow. turnabout's fair play. You got to turn and face. Dayron Sharp didn't face the defense there and just threw it over his shoulder. And that's one of the first live ball turnovers North Carolina's had. Most of them they've pitched out of bounds. At least they could play five on five with ease. Jeremy Roach with a big man on him. Sharp on a switch. Kicks it into the corner for Stewart. This lineup right now for Duke, no Mark Williams, no Matthew Hurt, each of them picking up an early foul in this game. Neither one has picked up a second, but they're both on the bench right now. But they're both getting ready to check back in, both at the scorer's table. Carolina getting a post touch and one-on-one -on -one in the post. And no second shots at all for Duke. Carolina hadn't needed too many because they haven't missed a ton of shots. And Duke's knocked down just one three-pointer. One for eight from three. Carolina, which is not a good shooting team. Three for four from three-point range. And remember, in the first game against Duke, it was their best three-point shooting game of the season. They went 10 for 15 in that game from beyond the end. Good box out by Brakefield. He's boxing out Armando Bacon, who had an opportunity to go after that rebound, but Brakefield just took his legs out from under. Wow, Stewart with some determination getting to the glass right there. And that's what you're going to need is turn the corner, get into the paint, put some pressure on this North Carolina defense. Duke has not done much of that in this first half. They're actually fortunate to only be down 14. Over to Walton, guarded now by Coleman. Picks it out to Sharp, six to shoot. Deep one low. Moore Jr. has been playing some really good basketball. Did not have a, a good start to the season, or at least in the month of December, but he's been coming on very well the last several weeks. Again, a good challenge, and again, no second opportunities, as Jay mentioned, for Duke. Not just that big body, but able to block it. That was a good take by Brakefield on the uh, offensive foul. Just lowered that shoulder and went right into the chest of Brakefield instead of going straight up. You go straight up, you'll be able to complete this play here, but as a clear offensive foul with a discard. A little shoulder, a little forearm, and the first on Baycott. Hurt and Williams have returned for Duke. The key for Duke is going to be to get this 14-point lead. If by halftime you could get it down under 10, and then you can have a ball game in the second half. Now Stewart's trying to do it. He's probably been the best Blue Devil to this point of the night. So good with that floater. Not an easy shot. Good and 
the best shooter on this Tar Heel team. Kerwin Walton knocks down the three. That is his 48th made three-pointer this season. Leads him in three-point field goals made, three-point field goal percentage, free throw percentage, best shooter by far. Goldwire turns it over on the alley oop attempt. Numbers for the heels. Davis with a pull up. And they get it back. Well, well short. It was too tough of a shot. Didn't need it. And especially when you've got those big guys. If you don't have something good, pull it out and run something. Hurt for three. They have got to get him going. You would think they have any chance of winning the game. The leading score in the ACC is scoreless. Better than 15 minutes into the game. He's not gotten any consistent touches. And when he has, he's taken a couple challenge shots. And had not come close on either one of them. Brooks to Kessler. Kessler's been playing really, really well lately. Carolina's leading scorer in two different games recently. And the reigning ACC Freshman of the Week. He is so skilled, great hands, and he's playing with a ton of confidence now. Remember Roy Williams told us earlier in the year he beats himself up. That's a turnover. That's off Stewart. He beats himself up a little bit mentally, but he's in a great spot now. 33-16 heels. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Carvana, the new way. You're going 0 for 4 in this game, Seth. The only way Duke gets back in the game is if Carolina makes bad decisions, takes bad shots, and doesn't take care of the ball. Now, both teams have turned it over a lot of the first half. Duke 10 times, Carolina 8 times, but Carolina shooting 54%, Duke just 32%. Duke switching just about everything except with Mark Williams. Shot clock at six. Love gets a switch. Three overheard. And the long rebound down to Joey Baker. Uh, one of the few threes that North Carolina's missed in that, this game. Good position inside. Williams with a follow, and the second time is good. Yeah, Walker Kessler just got caught on the high side. Uh, Mark Williams gave an angle to the basket. Very talented and big freshman in Mark Williams and Walker Kessler. Wow. Kerwin Wall. He is a pure shooter. You have to make him play on the move, not just put the ball on the floor because he can dribble into his shot. But you got to make him hunt shots and chase shots. Jay, the least heralded member of the freshman class, as you know, at times has been maybe the best of the freshmen when he's been shooting the ball very well. Well, he can make shots, and, and he gives a, a special lift to this team when he knocks shots down. It's different when another shot goes in for a player. A little crossover and dribbles to his right into that shot. It's just a beautiful stroke and fantastic balance. Carolina shooting the three extremely well in the win at Duke. Shooting it extremely well here tonight. Not so much in between, but making them count against the Blue Devils. Really remarkable, the, the contrast between how they've shot the ball against Duke and then the games in between. A low jumper for Love, who's having a nice first half. Nobody stopped the ball. Mike Krzyzewski telling his team, calm down a little bit. Let's get a good shot on the other end. But Caleb Love will just waltz into that shot, and yet another turnover. It dribbled right off of Wendell Moore's foot, went across the line, and it was due to the pressure of Caleb Love. Now, Caleb Love gets this rebound, pushes it up, and nobody really stops the ball. He's able to just dribble to the elbow. Everyone in, almost in retreat mode, trying to keep him from getting to the basket, getting deep into the paint, but he just pulls up for that shot. And he is playing with a ton of confidence in this game. A guy who was not really a point guard in high school, just a, he was a scorer. He's had to take on and knew he was taking on point guard responsibilities when he committed to North Carolina. The kick to Brooks, 19 footer, banks it in. Well, that's when you know it's going your way. But uh, just dragging the defense to the left and throwing back. So you either had the shot or you had a high low opportunity. Very balanced scoring so far for Carolina. Goldwire with a nice look. Extra pass more. And the three will go down for Matthew Hurt. His first points of the game. Got that off of Carolina being in rotation. We had to help the helper, and all of a sudden the guy left wide open was Matthew Hurt on the left wing. And 
Love lost the ball out of bounds and it is going to be a turnover it will belong to Duke. Well, Garrison Brooks his last couple of games he was 6 11 uh, 6 of 11 from the field averaging just under eight points a game in his last two but he's come out firing in this one. Has missed a shot four for four nine points in the game. Knocked down not only that three but one from the corner. As the clock was going down, he was well defended on that one, too. Inside the final minute of the first half, half that's been dominated by Carolina. There's a foul on R.J. Davis. The New York Live ACC Tournament begins Tuesday on the ACC Network. They'll have all three first round games for you at 2, 4, 30, and 7. And then Wednesday, all of the second round games will be on the ACC Network as well. Noon, 2.30, 6.30, and 9 o'clock Eastern Time. Go to getaccn.com for instant access. So let's take Duke, for example. If Duke loses this game, they are the 10 seed. That means, Jay, they would have to play on Tuesday against the 15 seed. They would have to play on the first day of the ACC tournament. Unusual position for the Blue Devils. Good drive by Matthew Hurd. Getting a couple buckets before halftime, so he can try to establish some sort of rhythm, but North Carolina has denied him any rhythm in this game. Black trying to go the distance. Offensive rebound for Baycott, and he's fouled. North Carolina puts themselves in position to grab those rebounds. It's one thing to have big bodies. It's another thing to have big bodies that are relentless in going after the glass. And every time a shot goes up, North Carolina's big guys position themselves, one on the weak side, and uh, they go to the glass every opportunity and don't miss one. Number one in the nation in offensive rebound percentage. They get 41% of their misses. Now, Roy Williams would tell you we missed too many shots. You know, I like the percentage of the misses. I'd like fewer offensive rebounds because I'd like fewer missed shots. Yep. Because there, this is not a good shooting team. A little horn set with Brakefield and Hurt up top. Two, two players in the corner, shooters to spread the floor. And the trap. Goldwire finds Hurt. Hurt finds Stewart. And Stewart finds the bottom of the net. Well handled to get out of that trap and find Stewart on the opposite eye. And a three at the end for Stewart makes the score a little bit closer. But Garrison Brooks on his senior night, despite an ankle injury, playing very well. Duke faces its largest halftime deficit of the season. Carolina is up by 16. Halftime coming your way along with Seth and Fonz. Here's Reese. All right, Dan, Jeep halftime report. The ACC is a wrap. And once again, it is Virginia for the fifth time in 12 years. The Cavaliers win the regular season title. Sam Hauser, C the 3B, the 3 had 24. We spent all season long saying, what's wrong with Virginia? They're not guarding. They're not this. They're not that. You know what they are? They're ACC champions. And they're ACC champions again. The ball over on the season at a 21% rate. That's one out of five possessions uh, results in a turnover. So if Duke can get a few stops, a few scores, and get it under 10, uh, they've got a ball game. Uh, now Duke's starting out in a 2-3 zone, try to limit uh, some of the penetration and try to disrupt some of the rhythm that North Carolina established in the first half. And underway here in the second half of our Sonic blockbuster. Nice shot fake and step in by Wolf. Just a beautiful shot fake. Defender flew by one dribble. And they say the mid-range shot is dead. It is not. Kerwin Walt keeping it alive. That was a huge first possession for North Carolina. Good position by Williams, and he slams it home over Baycott. And Baycott just gave him the angle there and then compounded the mistake by fouling. Watch, Williams gets a, an angle, and then you see his right arm wrapped around him, but he just, some, you know, post players call that selling out. You kind of go for, the, go for the, the steal or the knockaway, and you give your offensive player the angle to the basket, and that's just too easy for Mark Williams. Biggest positive in recent weeks for the Blue Devils probably has been the uh, 
rapid development of Mark Williams as he is getting big time minutes and not only protecting the rim but also becoming a much better offensive player and Duke comes out of the second half in the zone. And North Carolina looking to screen the zone. They'll keep somebody behind it right now it's Baycott and they usually do a good job rebounding against zones. They, they dominated Syracuse on the glass but weren't able to take advantage of it. Hurt with a clean look way short. This has not been the Matthew Hurt we've seen the last six games that they're shooting 59% for three. Baycott has it knocked away by Williams and Duke comes up with it. They got to string together some stops and scores to try to get back into this one. Williams does that quite a lot, knocking the ball away. He's got very good hands, able to get a piece of the ball. Oftentimes when a big guy reaches with one hand, that results in a foul. The last time the Duke Blue Devils did not make the NCAA tournament was 1995. That was the year that Mike Krzyzewski had back surgery and did not finish the season. The last time he finished the season and the team did not make the NCAA tournament, Jay, was your freshman year, I believe, 1982-83. Well, that wasn't Coach K's fault. They had a crappy center. <laughs> <laughs> no names, please. Let's protect they just you. put it on the screen. I don't have to say the name. That's the kind of there teammates right I there. have yeah. at ESPN. You've got lots of good friends in the truck, don't you? Do you feel popular right now? And I, might, and I might do that thing from Airplane where, where Johnny pulls the plug. <laughs> 1,062 points, 692 rebounds. Would have been more if Johnny Doc has ever passed. <laughs> Twenty-four on the shot clock is what we were being told. Brian Dorsey, Bert Smith, and Ron Gruber, the officials here in Chapel Hill. North Carolina doing a little, almost pre-switching on these out of bounds. Wendell Moore Jr. hangs and hits, and they got it down to 13. Well, Duke playing much stronger to start the second half. Two-two-one. Three-quarter court pressure now back into this 2-3 zone. The length in the middle because of that 7-4 wingspan of Mark Williams. And Carolina's trying to get some movement, and they move the big guys around. Ricky Black, not a great outside shooter. He's made eight threes all season, and four of them came in one game against Miami as he comes up empty there. Well, he's 4-4 against Miami at 16 points in that game. Andrew Playtech wound up hitting the game winner against the Hurricanes in that one. I'm not sure Mike Krzyzewski's going to love that shot. A quick three from Jamin Breakfield. And now they don't find Walton in transition, and it costs. Well, because of that bad shot that you're talking about by Breakfield, you're not able to get down court and establish your defense, and it's easy to lose Walton in transition because of the bad shot. A bad shot is the first pass in your opponent's fast break. Well, North Carolina is known for its transition. Leaky Black off the rebound, getting it up to Love. The cross-court pass, Duke in scramble mode. And a great job by Walton of finding the open spot. And then a great job by Caleb Love of finding the open man. And Jake, Caleb Love has six assists already in this game. He's been really under control in this one. And Look, last three games, North Carolina's turned the ball over 60 times. They had 60, uh, 20 turnovers against Syracuse. Jordan Goldwire pushing it for Duke and lays it in. Aggressive play by Goldwire. Nobody stopped the ball. And Love's going to have to be a little bit careful. He was able to draw a foul there, but that was not a, a strong pass. And you throw the ball cross court like that, you're inviting somebody to shoot the gap and take it the other way for an easy two. In terms of seeding, Carolina will be either the six or the seven of the ACC tournament. Duke will be either the nine or the ten, depending on the outcome of this game. Well, what a, obviously, this year has been odd in so many ways and unprecedented. 
Yeah, yeah no, nobody played a similar schedule. It's hard to even compare all the different records. Yeah. Even if they played the same number of games. I mean, North Carolina's played so many teams from the, you know, the top ten in the league. And they played more games against the top ten of the league than anybody else. And then they played more road games against good teams than I think anybody else. It's really, really been odd. Now Carolina had four games canceled due to COVID issues in league play. Duke had two games canceled. And then Carolina went out and rescheduled a couple of games. They brought Northeastern and Marquette here into the Dean Dome. And, of course, they lost the Marquette game. Yeah, that made for some fun post-game sound. Coach Williams was... Uh, not thrilled with the line of questioning. But again, they appear to have a really good case at the moment of being in, of being on the right side of the bubble. Joey Brackets has them as a 10 seed. And a win here today would make it an even stronger case heading into Greensboro. Yeah, I think North Carolina's firmly in the field. Now, that doesn't mean you, know, you lose the, your next couple of games uh, that, that you make it. But I think the, the Tar Heels are in, in very good shape to make the field. If Duke loses this game tonight, do you think they have to win the ACC tournament? Or if they made, say, a run to the final and beat a couple of ranked teams, might that be? They'd have to beat Florida State and Virginia to do it. Because you have to have those. There aren't as many high-value targets in the league this year as there have been in, in past years. The, the league is not rated the same way that it usually is. Love using the screen, driving past her. And gets a tough one to go, and he's fouled as well. What a tough move by Caleb Love. There you can see the scoring ability of the freshman from St. Louis. Physical. A volume shooter in high school that's learning to play the point, but he knows how to do this. Strong, accepting contact, finishing the play. Never took his eyes off the rim. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball. For you tomorrow afternoon. Big 12 action, Texas Tech is in Waco to take on the third-ranked Baylor Bears tomorrow at 4 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN and also streaming live on the app. How about a big win? Speaking of the Big 12, how about a big win for Oklahoma State on the road in Morgantown today? Jay without Cade Cunningham trying to work his way back from an ankle. Really remarkable. Avery Anderson wound up with, uh, I think I have 25 points. It was fantastic. That is an excellent recruiting class that Mike Boynton has at Oklahoma State. His freshmen have done a great job, and it, and it goes beyond Cade Cunningham. When you look at the seven teams in the Big 12 who are going to get into the tournament, don't you think all of them have Sweet 16 capabilities if they play well? Yes. I, I don't think there's much question about that. It just depends on the matchup they get. Uh, but both the Big 10 and Big 12 have proven that they can compete with anybody and beat anybody. Illinois in the game before us today here on ESPN with a, a nice win in Columbus. Io DeSumo back despite a facial injury playing with a mask and played from what we saw near the end of the game made some big plays and looked like himself. They caught in transition for the heels. Duke cannot get anything to go right now trying to answer back after North Carolina gets an relatively easy one with Baycott after the turnover and lob it up to Williams can't get it to go and Matthew Hurt continues to struggle miss that last shot he's got five points in this one who could have imagined that he would have this kind of game after the tear he has been on and he had 37 last week against Louisville he's gone six games where he couldn't miss and Caleb Love has really had a good game Step back. Maybe not the shot you wanted, but I, I think he's a, he's a good shooter that has not shot the ball well this year. I, I think he's got all the capabilities to be a good shooter. 7.7 assists tonight. Williams tries to go underneath and is fouled by Brooks. He got fouled right away, but the referees didn't call it. It almost looked like Brooks was trying to give the foul when Williams first caught it and then fouled him when he was going up for the shot on the other side of the rim. Watch, watch here. That, that's it. He came over. That's a foul. And the referees didn't call it. And then they fouled it. They called this one. You know, you're supposed to call the first foul. And that was a foul without question. Well, North Carolina off the bad shot. Nobody expecting it for Duke. 
just running the floor and essentially getting a three on one and Caleb Love hitting the trailer. Armando Baycott, the big guy running the floor. And the fast break points are going in favor of North Carolina. But everything's gone in favor of North Carolina. They, they have just dominated this game from start until now. And again, it's just got to wear on opposing big man. Brooks and Baycott go out and Sharp and Kessler come in 1611 171 yeah they're both freshmen both McDonald's All-Americans terrific talents there's just no left there's a steal by Tape who's just come in for Williams that's yeah, a different way to construct a basketball team most teams are going more for threes and that's that's why you turn it over you are inviting and uh, another turnover and then a foul Drew Baker thought he came up with a clean steal and Roy Williams wants them to take a little bit better care of the ball right now. Well, he just wants them to come to the ball. You know, you can cut down the time the ball's in the air by coming to the ball and running it into your hands. And right now, you know, North Carolina going into spots, they've gone into the corner where they're easy to get trapped. And it's just a question of being strong with the ball. You catch, face the defense before you dribble. Davis now handling. Love playing off the ball at the moment for the heels. Oh, what a pass. And Kessler slams it home. Just a beautiful pass by Caleb Love. And Dayron Sharp did a very nice job of on the baseline drive getting in front of the rim. Big guy needs to get in front of the rim to allow that pass. Really well done. Kessler did a really nice job when he didn't have it passing out of the post. And what a great pass. A little one-handed you know, bounce pass, a little pocket pass right here. And Dayron Sharp, oh, you go to go to block that shot, and it opens up the offensive glass. So if he makes it great, if he doesn't, Kessler's there to clean that up. And how often Jay, do good things happen just because a big guy cuts to the rim when he sees a guard putting the ball on the deck? Yeah, especially when he puts it on the deck baseline. You know, depending on where it's coming from, that's where you, you move to different spots. But on a baseline drive, you go right in front of the rim. But, you know, Dan, I mean, not there are so few teams that have these kind of big guys yeah. where, you know, you pass it to one and he draws defenders. You put the shot up and then you got somebody just as big, just as talented to clean it up. And it's really remarkable the, the the core of big man that North Carolina has and if the if the guards these young guards and this is extraordinary both of these are young teams but North Carolina's got very young guards just like Duke as soon as they start to play uh, at a higher level where they're more efficient in taking care of the ball and deliver it inside I mean this is a well-constructed team a turnover and what a block Leaky Black from behind, but then did not reestablish himself in a bounce, so it'll be Duke Ball, but what a play by Black. Got it with the left hand. And Leaky Black has long arms, did not give up on the play. Just a good pass ahead. Took it away with the left hand. Oh, that's a fantastic play. And he almost got his feet established before he touched the ball. Roach, who's had a very quiet night so far for Duke, is fouled. Roach has been the ultimate hot and cold player this year for Duke. Here are his point totals the last eight games. 16-16, 2-2, 12-14, It's kind of feast or famine Bingo. for Roach. Bingo! <laughs> Gee, I worked very hard on that. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, Walker Kessler is blossoming into an outstanding. He's going to be a great player. He's really good now, but he's going to be great. 11.52 to go, second half. Carolina. And Virginia with a win today over Louisville and Florida State losing at Notre Dame. That gave the Hoos a regular season title. How about the way Michigan bounced back from that performance they had against Illinois where the Illini just without Io DeSumo just crushed them in Chrysler and they turn around and the stat, you know, put a beat down on Michigan State and the, those two teams play again tomorrow mm -hmm. and what's a, an NBA type schedule for Michigan State the way they're finishing their season.
Michigan State according to Joey Brackett's on the right side of the bubble right now but again you know, everything is tenuous for so many different teams at this point heading into champion. Damron Sharp's done a nice job guarding out on the perimeter. And he's not he's a big guy that usually plays down in the post but he's done very well when his assignment out on the perimeter has been Matthew Hurt at times right now is Jamin Brakefield. He's been able to move his feet and stay in front and not commit fouls. Williams out again as Roach steps to the line for the Blue Devils. Duke going with a smaller lineup. Try to move these Carolina big guys around, see if they can open up some driving lanes. Talked a little bracketology a moment ago. And Joe Lenardi, we mentioned Michigan State, he's got him on the right side. He's got Duke as the the last of the first four out, if you will, but on the wrong side of the bubble. And down by 17 here in Chapel Hill means they're going to have to do extremely well in Greensboro to have a chance. Of course, if you win the tournament, you, you get the automatic bid. But a loss today for Duke would drop them to 500 at 11 and 11 on the season. And got to carry. No, I think they oh, got a foul. Yeah, wow. foul on Roach. Well, Duke has to has to put pressure on North Carolina now. It's not that the, that they necessarily have to take risks, but you can, you're going to see full court pressure trying to see if you can speed North Carolina's guards up, make their big guys and non handlers handle the ball a little bit more. So for Carolina, it's just about being strong with the ball. And they can be turnover from 20 a game the last three, as Jay mentioned earlier. Sharp, nobody to pass to. And how many big guys can do what Dayron Sharp just did at that size to make that move, put the ball on the deck from out there, and wind up with the free throw line? I would say at least one. <laughs> uh, just a really good job by Sharp. He puts the ball on the deck and is able to maneuver around Matthew Hurt to try to get that shot up with the left hand, draw the foul. But you can see he's just got really good feet. Just his power. And we've talked about the fact that he's a, a good passer. And... And per minute, he's the best offensive rebounder in the country. Leads this team in offensive rebounds, even though he only plays about 20 minutes per game. He's the one name, really, on this Carolina roster. He's the one guy whose name shows up on uh, NBA mock drafts and that sort of thing. And if he goes, for sure, he'd get drafted. I mean, you can see the sure. size and the skill. But you could also foresee, CJ if he came back, that he could turn into a monster next year. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, this team, this North Carolina team, and it goes it goes for Duke as well. If uh, Kerwin Walt is, man, that guy's a shooter. What a weapon he has become and can be. Uh, but I think this North Carolina roster, first of all, I think they all should come back. Anybody wants to leave, you should. That's fine. But uh, if... if it's almost like an old school construction of a team that they can grow together. Yeah. And I think even Roy Williams said, it, it, looking at this recruiting class, if he had had this recruiting class back at Kansas, he, he'd, he'd be talking about how great is this this group going to be going forward. So just no time wasted and efficient motion because Kerwin Walton's ready to shoot before the ball ever gets there. You know, that's the mentality he has. And I think as he goes forward in his career, you're going to see more and more teams you know, he's going to be what, what you would call a no closeout guy you want to stay as close to him close to him all the time so you never have to close out and he's going to have to start hunting shots and doing a lot more work to get an open shot and getting back to you know the growth of the freshman class you can unquestionably see how Caleb Love can grow as he oh yeah you can see how Walker Kessler can grow as he you know with Brooks uh, Presumably Brooks doesn't come back. Remember, this is a free year, and any senior can come back. But let's assume that Garrison Brooks doesn't come back. Uh, we don't know about Sharp. You assume Baycott will, and then you got Kessler. Like Kessler's going to get a lot more minutes, and he, he's going to become a big factor. He's he's going to be a great player. But but I, I would apply the same analysis to Duke's lineup that DJ Stewart, Jeremy Roach. These are really good good prospects and good players, and you know they've had some ups and downs in their freshman year, which. Happens to, to guys. 
there's a difference between an R.J. Barrett and a Zion Williamson than most highly rated, you know, top 25 players. You know, some are supernovas, like those guys. You know, these guys are not that, but that is not, you don't mean that as a slight to say, hey, you know, it's going to take these guys a little bit longer to be great. Meanwhile, the seniors having a pretty good night, isn't he? Well, Garrison Brooks is not just having a, a good game now. He was the preseason player of the year. He has not had his best year. Last year was fantastic. Garrison Brooks, when he arrived at North Carolina as a freshman from Alabama, he was prepared to play right away. And really nice backdoor play, DJ Stewart. That's a tough finish over Armando Bacot. But Garrison Brooks had, had almost next level understanding of, of how to defend as a college player. And Carolina actually gives out a defensive player of the game award in every game, unless they're displeased with everybody. Every now and again, nobody gets one. But Garrison Brooks in his four years, Jay, to your point, has won the defensive player of the game award 37 times. And so I think since 2007, the only one with more is Marcus Page. by Davis to find Anthony Harris moving the ball nicely. Brooks is feeling it from beyond the arc but comes up short. Hey, Brooks just lost it. Or was that deflected by Brooks? I don't think Brooks we're, we're not sitting down at the court. We're up a fair ways from the court but it didn't look to me like Brooks touched that ball. Brooks just lost hurt in transition after that shot attempt. And that's to leave Bacon. And North Carolina just like against a small lineup. They need to they need to put the ball. Well, they got Williams back in the game. They need to put the ball inside at every opportunity to play inside out. You know, the one thing you don't want to do with this kind of lead, 20 point lead, there's still eight and a half to go in regulation. And you don't want to be putting up perimeter shots unless the ball's touched the paint. You know, if you're a Carolina fan, you can watch them at times and say, you know what? Their good is really good. Like they beat Louisville 99 to 54 a couple of weeks ago. Then they lost to Marquette. Then they beat Florida State, but then they lose at Syracuse. It's not that they're not talented. It's not that they're not capable of being really good. They just haven't really been able to sustain it for two. Well, that's often the difference between uh, the, the good teams and the, and the really good teams is high-level consistency. And, and North Carolina's not been consistent at the highest level. Uh, they've had turnover issues, and, they, and that's because their guards are young. Duke's gone through the same thing. I mean, Duke's turned the ball over like crazy uh, during the year as well, and that affected their defense and led to a lot of different issues for, the, for that team. But and now both teams starting to throw the ball all over the place. Wendell Moore off to Goldwire, back to Moore for the bucket. Quiet night for Moore, just his fourth point of the night. 7.27 to go, Carolina with a healthy lead. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by H&R Block. Their experts can do your taxes virtually. Get your taxes done without leaving home. Clock Eastern time number 18 Texas Tech and number three Baylor you can see it on ESPN and streaming live on the ESPN app but will there be a bigger moment for Texas Tech this year than what happened for Ty Larson student manager got into the game on senior day came in against Iowa State in the closing seconds of the game Jay and stepped in and took a charge. How fun, how cool, and look at the reaction from his teammates. This is the best. Yeah, it was awesome. I mean, all the, the walk-ons and deep bench players put in the same amount of work, the same amount of time, and the way the regulars sort of celebrated that play by Ty Larson was, uh, was just fantastic. And look at the Big 12 bracketology again. The strength of the league. Seven of the ten teams are going to get into the tournament. All of them will be highly seeded. Uh, all of them will be very difficult outs. It'd be interesting to watch Baylor tomorrow again with each passing game coming back from their COVID pause starting to look more and more like themselves. Yes, they, they played. Each game played better and better. Did not play well against Iowa State uh, and almost got beat. They did not play well at all against Kansas. And Kansas was great in Allen Fieldhouse. But against Oklahoma State the other night, I thought Baylor was terrific. And Jared Butler looked like himself again. And a number of coaches had told Scott Drew that they felt like 
and that's not like everybody's got a ton of experience with it. They, they felt like it took a few games. Another great cut by Dayron Sharp and doing chin ups on the rim. And I think the rim was a little bit frightened when he went up there. This is movement and mobility. The pass, the give and go still works. DJ Stewart turns his head. Mark Williams a little late coming over. But even if he got there, that is uh, that is one powerful young man. And with a very nice touch as well. So power and touch. Caroline has been in control pretty much from the opening tip. I think they, they didn't win the opening tip, but won everything since then. A 21 right now. And a very competitive game at Duke a few weeks ago in the first matchup of the regular season. Stewart swatted away by Baycock. And out of bounds, back to Duke. And you can see the next step for Mark Williams, who has really improved and, and is, is a fine player, is to, to get stronger in his lower base because he's going up against two uh, two players in Sharp and Baycock that, that are much stronger in their lower bodies and able to move him around. So he, he can't establish that position and hold his ground as easily as he'd like. Goldwire with about a 25-footer with a shot clock running down off the back of the iron. You know, and just during that last sequence, we started to hear the chant of Tar Heels. There are fans in the building just the second time. They were here for the Winnipeg, Florida State last week. I think about 3,000 fans, and most of the tickets given to students, although they're not all in the student section. There's obviously, for distancing reasons, spread out around the arena. But, you know, you talk to coaches and you hear from players, even having 2,500, 3,000 fans is a tremendous difference, Dave, from playing in an empty arena. Yes, no question. And, and it's it's nice to see. You know, we've been in arenas during the year with fans, whether it was at, uh, at Baylor or Texas Tech. You know, we've seen it first time in the ACC. Uh, we've seen it, or at least I've seen it, and, uh, and it's nice to have. Well, Baycott and Coleman, their high school teammates, they're all tangled up. And and Bert Smith went in there and said, "Hey, you two. And then they said, to him, "No, no, it's a, we know yeah, each other. We're good. Yeah, <laughs> we are high school buddies. They they played together. That's funny. Both of them out of Richmond, Virginia. Uh, they've, they've had a lot of battles together and. Pickup games and AAU and high school, you name it, high school practice. That must be a funny moment for an official. He rushes over to break it up and they're like, no, 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 like, we're like family, we're good. <laughs> RJ Davis doing a nice job staying front defensively and switches off on Matthew Hurt. Solid job. Well, Hurt follows up his own miss, tips it up and in. Duke trot, wow. Oh. Moore going for the steal and wound up flattening Davis. The crowd didn't like that. You know, just reaching across his body and a clear foul, but it didn't look like there was any intent to do anything more than just go after the ball. And then he kind of landed on the ball, too, on his right side as he hit the deck. And unfortunately, Davis is okay. You know, one of the things, though, when you are in in a, a game that you know can is a little bit out of hand, there's still still almost six minutes to go, so there's still time. But you, know, you want to be you want to be mindful that when you go to the basket, oftentimes you want to go off of two feet so that you can protect yourself because you know that your opponent's going to come after it and trying to make something happen. Again, a loss for Duke in this game. They will be the 10 seed in the ACC tournament, which means they will have to play a first round game on Tuesday. 10 through 15 have to play on Tuesday. Three games there, and that gets them down to 12 for the second round on Wednesday. That is all assuming, we should just mention this once, that Virginia Tech is there. The Hokies have been off the street, a couple of games canceled due to COVID issues, contact tracing. And hopefully Virginia Tech is going to be able to play in Greensboro this year. Here's how the bracket would look if Carolina wins this game. And they're up 19 with 5.28 to go. Again, Virginia, the regular season champs because of their win today and the Florida State loss. Seminoles, two. Hokies, three. Georgia Tech, 
the four seed, so they get a double by Clemson five. And then if Carolina wins, they're the six. And if Duke loses this game, they are the ten. Well, it's a remarkable turnaround for Georgia Tech. You know, when the Yellow Jackets started the season, they had lost some games that, that were head scratchers. Now, they, they weren't able to practice. They were playing more games than they were having practices. But how about Moses Wright? And Moses Wright may very well be the ACC player of the year with the way he has performed, especially not, not just all season long, but the way he's performed the second half of the ACC season. There's, there's been nobody better than him. I know that. He is third in the league in scoring and third in the league in rebound. So he certainly got first team all ACC credentials at the very least, you would think. And he's blocking shots. I mean, he's been dominant. You know, Justin Champagne of Pitt obviously putting up huge numbers. Matthew Hurts gotten a lot of. Uh, notoriety for the kind of year that he's had as an ACC player of the year candidate Sam Hauser for Virginia the best three-point shooter in the league will get a lot of attention I think Carly Jones in Louisville too deserves a lot of uh, consideration I thought he was the front runner actually a couple weeks ago but in this league things have been changing That's a block. you know what is strange we talked about this before the game the wooden award has now been narrowed down to the late season 15 and there is not a single ACC player on that list. It's stunning, really. And and I don't have any any disagreement with that uh, because there have been so many excellent players throughout the throughout the country and leagues that have performed at a higher level. And three Zags on the list. And, and you can't quarrel with it at all. No. Timmy belongs there. Suggs belongs there. And obviously, Gisbert belongs there. And a couple of Illini, Kofi Coburn and Io DeSumo. And a couple of Villanova Wildcats, and it's just, you know, such a shame to see Colin Gillespie go down with an injury at this point of the season. Well, you might be able to quarrel with one or two and say, okay, well, I would put an ACC player, maybe Matthew Bird or Carly Jones, or, but, but overall, there's not a lot of argument to be had. And still, guards are the clear front runner. Right? I think so, and, and, and I do think, and it probably shouldn't enter into it, but I do think that there's going to be uh, some voters that bring in last year as well, that, that his performance last year, that, that he's been uh, as good as anyone for the last two years. But to me, it would be Luca Garza of Iowa, uh, Iowa DeSumo of Illinois, and Corey Kispert of Gonzaga. Yeah. Those would be the three that would be battling it out. Yeah. You know, and you could, you could put Jared Butler uh, from Baylor in there as well because he's been so good at both ends of the floor. I wonder if the pause and kind of the disjointed nature of their season hurts them a little bit. It could. It could. There's no question. You know, Armando Baycott at the line for Carolina. The sophomore is the leading scorer on the team at 11 and a half points per game. The last time Carolina did not have a player score 12 points per game was 1946-47. Now, this is not a bad offensive team. They score 74 points per game. They just spread it around, and they don't have one guy who really lights you up. And it's kind of crazy to think nobody on the team even scores 12 a game. Yeah. Well, that 47 team really shared the ball, too. A lot of different weapons. Yeah. You, you didn't play against them, did you? No. But uh, Raftery told your stories? Bill Raftery used to do their games. <laughs> Sorry, Bill, if you're listening. It was right there on the tee. Wherever he is, I know the sound's off. <laughs> Inside on the line, including the light heavyweight belt as Israel Adesanya moves up in weight to challenge Jan Blahovic. The prelims coming up next at 8 o'clock Eastern on ESPN. The main card begins at 10 on a pay-per-view. To order, go to ESPNplus.com slash PPV. Adesanya was a kickboxer, too. Was he? Yeah. You are a man of much knowledge. Fights out of New Zealand. Now, I did not know what uh, what sub wins were. I know what Subway is because that's where you take me when we visit <laughs> Boy, Canada. have you gotten one, a lot of mileage out of one mishap? It was a big mishap. <laughs> it was an epic fail. <laughs> sub wins is wins by submission. Oh, right, submission. not a knock. Okay. Tap out. Yes. Gets away by Baycott. Bounces right back to Baker. And laying it in is Williams. Williams has got a lot of talent. 
of his last six games coming into this one. That includes a game against Virginia where he barely played just because of matchups. But you know, he's averaged close to 12 points a game, over six rebounds, he's blocking close to three shots, and he was 30 of 42 from the field in his last six coming into this game. You know, Jay, we asked Mike Krzyzewski yesterday in our Zoom call with him, you know, what are the spirits of the players like? I mean, so many close losses coming in off a couple of overtime defeats. Not the kind of year that anybody who goes to Duke expects to have. This would be their third loss in a row. They would have to play on Tuesday, the first day of the ACC tournament against the 15 seed BC. You know, how do you kind of rally the morale of a, of a team? It's difficult, and I think one of the things that compounds any issue that your team may have is the fact that these players are all living in isolation. So they can't really get away uh, from some negativity. And uh, and that's, a, that's difficult. You know, Roy Williams made a, an interesting point yesterday about, about his team and his freshmen, is that, that North Carolina was only in uh, in-person school for six days before the university had to had to shut down for COVID reasons and everything went virtual. His players don't really, his freshmen don't really know where any of the buildings are on campus. That if he turned them loose today and said, hey, go find the dining hall, they, they wouldn't be able to do it. And that, that just shows you how different this year has been uh, for, for athletes, that, that they're living in hotels. And that, that's, that's a difficult thing. Caleb Love having himself a day. Now 13 points and seven assists for Caleb Love. Well, he had 25 points in the last game between these two teams. Seven assists in that one as well. And he's he's got great strength. Yeah. And he's such a, a, a big, strong athlete. And I think as he learns to play the point guard position, and he's made great strides. You're, you're looking at an all ACC player in the future. 6'4, 195, freshman from St. Louis. Carolina, as we mentioned, not a good outside shooting team, but against Duke, they have shot the ball extremely well in both games, especially from beyond the arc. It's kind of crazy. So instead of scheduling Marquette, schedule Duke a bunch more. <laughs> Jerry Baker looking for the foul. Kind of Picked his leg out there, no call. Air ball back out to Moore. And another shot that is well off the mark. And Love wanted a call there on Coleman, doesn't get it. It'll be Duke ball. Yeah, that's where he just needs to back dribble and pass it. And that, that's sort of the learning process, too, getting pressure in a late game situation. You know, you just, you just back dribble away from the pressure and pass the ball. You know, he, he lost it just as he was going into Coleman, but there was nowhere to go. You know, if he back dribbles, then he can create some space and then shoot by him. Well, I know that from all the players who shot by me. <laughs> you know, but each passing year, your playing days feel like more and more of a traumatic experience. Oh, it was. You tell stories. Yeah, like, like to, <laughs> tonight on Senior Day, you know, North Carolina gives, uh, gives the seniors a framed jersey. You know, Duke gave me a, a framed pair of shorts because I did my best work sitting on the bench. <laughs> well, somebody scored 1,062 points and had 692 rebounds. Love back of the line. Carolina will go into the ACC tournament as the six seed. Pretty dangerous six seed. What was the high they could have been? They could have been heading into today. They could have been anywhere, I think, between the four and the eight, depending on various results. It's amazing spread there. Virginia wins the regular season championship. They're the one, obviously, Florida State the two, Virginia Tech the three, and Georgia Tech the four. If you haven't seen Georgia Tech, they're feisty. They got a real spirit about them. And one of my favorite players in the league, Jose Alvarado. Watch. Great defensive player. And a, and a terrific leader, Michael DeVoe, uh, Jordan Usher. They've got good players, but Moses Wright really he protects the rim. And, and I agree with you. They're going to be an interesting team to, to watch in the, the ACC tournament. And, and they're going to be in the NCAA tournament, yeah. I believe. Yeah. 
Carolina with an 18 point lead 203 to go we talked about how nobody on the team is scoring more than 12 a game this year how balanced they have been this season they have been balanced in a very good way today productive offensively sometimes the big guys carry the load but today Jay the big guys have scored and the guards have shot the ball well as well and most everything North Carolina has done I mean I know Roy Williams and his staff are going to watch the film and say too many turnovers Poor decision here, poor decision, you know, different things like that. But overall, it was a very competitive uh, performance and a strong performance by this North Carolina team. And one of the things that, that when you look at the numbers, that, that is really interesting about this game is the number of free throws. That, that Duke, Duke has had a real difficulty getting the free throw line all year long. And usually that's a place where the Blue Devils live. And they're, they're one of the, the lowest volume free throw shooting teams in the country. They come into the game today having shot, having attempted 74 fewer free throws than their opponents. Yeah, I mean, their free throw rate is down in the lower third of Division I. And usually it's among the, among the leaders in the country because of their uh, aggressiveness in driving the ball and you know, playing drive and kick basketball, attacking closeouts. And as much as Williams is developing, they don't have a true, pure back to the basket, throw it into the post, get fouled every time. I mean, this guy is becoming a heck of a player and will continue to do so. But for much of the year, they they haven't really had a true post presence as well. Hurt can play inside, but probably more dangerous outside. Yeah, and, and I'm not sure, you know, having Mark Williams establish himself as the five now, I mean, it's just, it's just good for his ability to protect the rim. Uh, I'm not sure how much it keeps Matthew Hurt out of foul trouble because he's fouled out the last two games anyway. He's yeah. still got to guard sometimes bigger fours. He's got to guard stretch fours. And, and teams target him and try to go after him to pick up fouls and try to make him guard. That's what you do with a, a leading scorer is you try to make him guard. And so that's still been an issue. We would expect to see Garrison Brooks pulled from the game before it ends. This is his senior night. Let him get uh, an ovation you know such as it is from the 3,000 or so, but he deserves that after the four years that he's had in Chapel Hill. Look out. Harris corrals the pass and gets fouled. Andrew Playtech, another one of the seniors is who did start the game. And again, he's in the rotation. It looks like he's getting ready to come back into the game. And Roy's giving explicit instructions about who's taking who. And you got to believe that Garrison Brooks is just about ready to come out of this game. Yeah, Playtech, who I think we mentioned before, hit that game winner against Miami down in Coral Gables. He's had career highs and threes this year, played more minutes. Maybe not. Play tech for Walt. Leaky Black must be coming in for Harris, the shooter. Well, maybe they put all the all the seniors in just to be able to take them out and get the get a nice hand for them. Well deserved, not only for tonight but for their careers. Brooks picks up his third. Do you think next year, when we get back to whatever normal is, that coaches will go back to wearing coat and tie? I hope not. I hope not. <laughs> I kind of like it. Yeah. And, and as we know, Roy Williams has really taken the shoe game to another level this year. Now, he has been OG in that regard. Very impressive. I, I believe he's had a different pair every game. Probably with all the pacing he does, probably more comfortable, right? <laughs> well, you know how superstitious he is as well. Yeah. I mean, it used to be if he, he wouldn't wear the, uh, the sport coat or suit, if he suffered a loss, he wouldn't wear it again. Well, a year ago, you and I were in Greensboro getting ready to call a quarterfinal game on the Thursday between Florida State and Clemson when everything came 
to a screeching halt. Boy, it seems like longer than a year ago that we were there, but back to Greensboro they go for the ACC tournament this year. With Virginia, Florida State, Virginia Tech, and Georgia Tech. The uh, top four seeds earning the double buys. And again, with a win today, Carolina's going to go in as the six. Duke will go in as the 10. Of the current 15 teams in the ACC, and again, some are original members, some have come in much more recently, nine of the 15 have won the ACC tournament. In the past decade, six of them have won. You have to go back to the late 80s and the 90s for the other three, Wake, Georgia Tech, and NC State, the last time that they won. Six of the 15 have never won an ACC tournament championship, including one original member, the Clemson Tigers, who will go into Greensboro as the five seed. How wide open is it? I can't imagine that you could, you could make a prediction that you have any confidence in that the league has been so volatile uh, we've seen you know, so many ups and downs for from level of play and, and uh, consistency uh, I, it will be a lot of fun uh, it'll be different and we'll, we've never seen a tournament quite like we're going to see in Greensboro and that, that goes for all the all the conferences some teams looking to improve their seats so we've got a couple of bubble teams looking to just have a chance to get in. And some teams, honestly, Dan, some teams are worn out. Yeah. Uh, worn out from, from the difficulty of the season, just uh, not winning as much as they'd like, and then the difficulty, frankly, uh, of dealing with this COVID. Well, now Roy Williams is going to make the move. We'll bring a couple of the seniors back in, and K.J. Smith and Walker Miller. And heading out, eventually. So well respected and well liked by his teammates, as you can see, Garrison Brooks getting a much deserved opportunity to head out and get an ovation. Yeah, respected not only by his teammates and coaches, but respected by the league. Uh, he's, he's an incredibly well respected player for the way he conducts himself and how hard he plays and, and what a good player he has been over his four years. Boy, how nice was it? He rolled that ankle early and he rolled it pretty good, but he was able to come back into the game and, and play well. And how nice for him to really to be able to enjoy his senior day. Yeah, and, and yesterday at North Carolina's practice, at the end of practice, we were able to see you know, North Carolina great Kenny Smith, who was here to see his son KJ, uh, also a redshirt senior at his last game in the Smith Center, if these players decide not to come back, which we're not sure what happens. but. Uh, would have been nice if, if Kenny could have stayed around to see the game. He had to get to Atlanta for the All-Star game, but it was nice that he could be here for practice yesterday. And you can see you know, Brooks got a little bit emotional, kind of tears welling up in his eyes a little bit as he walks off this court for the last time. It's meaningful, incredibly meaningful sure. to play you know, anywhere you get to play. It's meaningful, but you play at a place like North Carolina or Duke, and you play for Roy Williams or Mike Krzyzewski, Dean Smith. Whomever, uh, it's an unforgettable time period. What a great, what a great way to finish for North Carolina. That KJ Smith put that in. Well, Kenny was here last night. Couldn't be here because of work obligations today. But Kenny, we hope you'll watch it. Number 30 can still score. And there's Sterling Manley, a redshirt junior who's had a lot of injuries in his career because of the medical redshirt. He actually came in with the other seniors who started here at North Carolina. Now he's got a block at the other end, and good for him to have some fun. That's well, quite an ex exclamation point for North Carolina on an emphatic win. And when you say dominant tap to buzzer, uh, it, it applies in this one. Duke was never in this game. North Carolina took him out of it from the very beginning. An impressive win for North Carolina as Garrison Brooks and company enjoy their senior night. Both teams are headed to Greensboro to find out what happens over the next week. Should be a lot of fun. For Jay Billis and our crew, I'm Dan Shulman. Thanks so much for watching. It is time for UFC 259.